that beat means I'm recording right now. So now, if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, it's going to get recorded. I don't know how sensitive this mic is. I don't know if it will hear you actually doing it. But what it will hear is me saying, kid, stop doing that. And if I do it a lot, it will be recorded. And then when I parent teacher night comes around and your parents come and say, I don't know what's wrong with my kid. I say, oh, well, here, play, play, play. Oh, I didn't realize they were like that in class. No, nobody ever does. My son is one of those kids, though. He's a puke in school. So what are you going to do, right? Okay. Does anybody remember how to do this? Of course, what you have is a triangle with 72, and you know that is 12, and you want the length across the river. So, of course, you have an angle of 72 degrees, a theta. You have an adjacent of 12 and an opposite of x. And then, of course, you remember, what do you use? Tan 72 equals opposite x over adjacent 12. And then you use your good friend algebra, 12 times tan 72 equals x. And since I don't have a calculator right in front of me, I will be doing this. Ta-da! There's a calculator. And I will go 12 tan 72. Now there's a chance I'm going to get the wrong answer here. A different answer than you, which is I've done possibly on purpose. No, nope, I got the right answer. It's 36.9. If you don't have 36.9 and you did all this work, then your calculator is in the wrong mode. And you will get all of these questions wrong at the answer, but you might have the work right. Okay? I'm not worried about the calculator mode right now. I'm more worried about that you know what to do. Is this starting to come back to people now? Excellent. By the way, just out of curiosity, because we have a lot of people that in this room that are, were not in grade 10 in this school. Um, everybody has done trig before, yes? Everybody in this room has done trigonometry? Basic trigonometry like this? Sweet, okay. The side adjacent to the 74 degree angle. So there's a 74 degree angle. The adjacent side is six. How long is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse, of course, lives over there. So I have an angle of 74. I have an adjacent side of 6. And my hypotenuse is unknown. What uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Cosine 74 equals adjacent 6 over hypotenuse. I'm going to call that x. When the number is on the top, I do division. 6 divided by cos 74 will get me x. And what is that answer, somebody who did it? It should be around 20-ish. 21.7, you say? Uh, it sounds good to me. 21.7. Everybody is Gouda? Lovely. And finally, the last thing you would have had to do in grade 10, solve A, B, C. Solve means all the angles and all the sides. And there's a million ways, well, there's not a million. There's no proper order for doing this. You can do this in any order you want. But the easiest part right now is how big is that angle? 60. So that is 60 degrees. So that's one of the things solved. Now I can use any kind of trig to solve the other sides. You can also use or, uh, Pythagoras as well. It depends on what you want to do. I'm going to call that B. I'm going to call that A. And whatever math you do, you can use Cosine of 30 with 20 in B. You can use uh, tan of 30 with 20 in A. 
You can use sine of 60 with 20 in B. You can use tan of 60 with 20 in A. And then you could use Pythagoras. It doesn't really matter what you do. Okay? So what I would do is I would use my 30 here. And I would say tan 30 equals A over 20. So A equals 20 times tan 30. That's the first one I would do. And then, once I knew A, I would come over here and I would use Pythagoras to find B. So I would do this. 20 tan 30 to get 11.54. And then B, I know, is the square root of 20 squared plus 11.54 squared. So I would go back to my calculator. There's my 11.45 squared. So I would go square root squared plus 20 squared, which is 400. And then I would square root that answer. And I would get 23. Point one. Everybody remembers trig? Everybody remembers trig better now than they did when I handed this out? Yeah. Excellent. Good. We don't do trig till the third thing. All right. Now I'm going to pause my recording and let you work a little on What? Ah. <sighs> There's lots of ways to factor number four. The way I like to factor number four is I take that number and I multiply it by that number. So I need factors of 14 that add to 15. What are those factors? What are the two numbers that will multiply to 14 and add to 15? One and 14 x plus 14, x plus 1. But to get 14, I had to multiply 2 by 7. So that means at the end, I got to divide everything by 2. 14 divided by 2 is x plus 7. And that 2, you move up to the front. And you get 2x plus 1. That's the way I like to factor those. There are all kinds of other ways to factor that. But that's the way I like to do it. I learned it from a math teacher in Australia. I never actually met him or her. I stole it from the internet. I used to factor these a different way, but kids could never understand it. So I went on the internet and I found another way to do it. And this way works. A lot of people do it differently. I don't care how you do it as long as you know how to do it. I'll review that again later when we get to factoring. The factors of that expression. What's the biggest number that goes into 18, 27, and 9? 9. How many A's can I get out? 2, because that guy has two A's to give. How many C's can I get out? 1, because that guy only has one C to give. So it's 9A squared C, 2 a squared c squared minus 3 c cubed plus a. Everybody remembers how to do these? Or if you didn't remember how to do it now, it's coming back to you now. Everyone has seen factoring polynomials at some point in their lives, yes? Sweet. This one is x minus 8 x minus 8, which you could also write as x minus 8 squared. And this one is 4, x squared minus 9. And then, of course, you recognize those are both squares. So it becomes 4, x plus 3, x minus 3. And those are all the answers. 
Everybody cool with polynomials? Everybody has at least a working memory of it. Oh yeah, I remember how to do those. I've seen those before. If I practice a little bit more, I got them. Everybody is there, yes? Score! This is gonna be an awesome year of pre-calculus 11. I can already tell. This question made you write things down. Is there a right answer to this? No, because I asked you to describe the scenario, yes? There's a lot of things you could describe. Are there some wrong things you could say? Could I say this is a person jumping off the ground? Why not, Jazz Carrot? Pardon me? Because the distance is in meters. I cannot jump 45 meters off the ground, right? It's because of the red sun. Ah, see what I did there, Superman? Ah, oh, screw you. Fine. Could I? Ah, screw it. What are some people's uh, scenarios? What is this? What am I graphing here? It could be Superman jumping, couldn't it? But it's a bit tricky, isn't it, Burke? Because it says distance, right? When you jump, what are you measuring? Usually. Height, right? So you could say, oh, no, Mr. Myers, it could be distance like a long jump. But then how does he get back to where he started? Did he jump all the way around the world? No, because it's only 51 meters. Luke, what do you got? Uh, someone walked 43 meters and then walked back. There you go. Easy peasy, right? Walked away 43 meters and walked back at exactly the same pace. Perfect. How can you walk 43 meters? It's 43 meters in three seconds would be about a world record 100 meter pace. So Usain Bolt could do this. It only says possible. And did it have to be walk? Could have ridden his bike, right? Luke's pretty fast. I've seen him play football. It's pretty fast. You think you're that fast, Luke? Three second 40. <laughs> what is your 40? You don't know? I don't even know what a good 40 time is. Anything under five? All right. Okay, third page. Go diddly O. I'll pause my recording again. Oh, do people need a little more time with this? Excellent. Let us carry on then. What has to go on the x-axis? The distance or the time? Time. And it is measured in what? Seconds. You don't have a choice there. You do have a choice in what you make each little square worth. I made each square worth 15 seconds. So four of them was 60, one minute. Okay? What goes on the y-axis? Distance. And what's it measured in? Meters. Again, no choice there, but then you have a choice here. Ten meters. So... 15 seconds until I reach 10 meters per second. I start at zero. One square is 15. There's 10. Then I draw the line. How long did I stay at that pace? Five minutes. Four of them is one minute, yes? So I got to go out 20 squares, right? So out 20 squares. I'm not counting. As long as it's a flat line, I'm happy, right? And then... I take 60 seconds to slow down. So once I'm out at 200, I got to go one, two, three, four, down to zero, and connect that line. That's what your graph should look like. Steep, flat, not as steep. Everybody cool? Everyone remembers how to do it? We are going to be doing a crap load of work with graphs this year. Make sure you're comfortable with them. Graph this. 
negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 1, 5, 1, 1, 4, negative 5. How many of you connected the line? Be honest, how many of you drew that line? Is it okay to draw that line? Josh, you think it is, right? Because you drew it. Right. Okay. Why did you draw the line? You have to see if it's linear. So you're using the rule that if you draw that line and it makes a straight line, it's linear, right? Yeah. Okay. The only problem with that is if I draw that line, then that value right there has that value right there, correct? Right? Yeah. We agree that that would be about one and a half and negative one and a half, or sorry, two and a half and negative one and a half, right? But do I know that that point is on this line? Or do I only have data for those four points? What are the only points that I know are on this line? These four, right? So how do I check if it is linear? If I'm not allowed to draw the line, I check slope. Negative two, positive one. Negative two, positive one. Negative two, positive one. I hit that dot, so I'm okay. Down two, over one, down two, over one, down two, over one, and I hit that dot, so I'm okay. Everybody remembers that? Drawing the line is fine to check if it is linear, but technically, I can't leave the line there. Everybody cool? Sweet. Last page. And we've got six minutes. I'm going to make that last page homework. And I want everybody to stop for a moment because this is what's going to happen. The end of the day, 